How's it going lads? Welcome back to the garage. So for the past few weeks now I've been slowly working on this Dutch tool chest here and one thing I've really been kicking down the road is the lid. So I have a few planks joined together here with tongue and groove joints. Same story at the end. So today what we're going to do is we're going to try to get it all flat. I don't think we'll get it perfectly flat just because this timber has an awful tendency to move and warp. So we'll just get it flat once and then it can move how it likes. I'm not too bothered about this being perfect the whole time. Uh, so once we have it flat, then I'm going to put little, um, little tools onto the panel. You know, this is the tool chest. We want to maximize as much of the inside area as possible. So when you fold this lid up, there'll be an arsenal of tools right here in front of you ready to go. But the first thing we're going to do is plop it down here real quick. I honestly don't know how I managed without uh, a tail vise for the longest time. See, we can just pop our bench dogs, which are these fellas up, and then lock. I have the vise back here, which you guys can't see, but that's now locked into place. So we can pull out, I'm gonna get our joint or plane, our number seven here. I haven't used this in a while now, so it'll probably need to be sharpened, but we're gonna use this to get this surface here entirely flat. So yeah, let's do that right here now. I'm gonna pop off the iron and just get sharpening. This was, um, this is the first jointer plane I ever got. Um, I've had a number of number seven since, but I've always hung on to and used the first one I got. I remember I couldn't find any for sale online. The Irish tool market, very limited. Uh, so I found a fella that used to sell old tools. He hadn't sold a tool in like two years. And I sent him an email um, asking him had he any number sevens? And he got back to me anyway. Uh, and he rang me and was like, oh yeah, I have a number seven. It's an older type. I think this is like a type 11. It's back when they had um, no Stanley imprinted on the lever cap and only the, the low fat knob. And I was like, all right, so it's the only thing I can find. But once I got this plane, I really liked the feel of the handle, uh, more so than I like the modern ones. I'll show you there now. The raised handle is like this. Uh, so I think I kind of fell in love with the older type standees then. And uh, now I have nearly a full set, the number three through the number seven, all in old style. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. What we need is a screwdriver, and I don't think we can find any, so we're going to commit the mortal sin of using a blunt chisel. I have a diamond stone in here as well, so we're just going to bring this fell up to a thousand grit, get her good and sharp, and then we're going to work on this thing. I'm going to use some WD-40 to oil up the diamond stone real quick. And then we're just going to go like this for a quick while. One of the best things you can do for your woodworking skills, in my opinion, is learn how to sharpen freehand. I used to use jigs the whole time and um, honing guides to get these angles uh, sharp. But now I'm not too worried about getting it perfectly sharp every time. Once, it's, once I can reasonably match 30 degrees, and once you strap it nice and good afterwards, I've been able to get an edge that I'm perfectly happy with consistently. When you have to worry about honing guides, it just makes the whole thing a bit more of a pain, so you're less likely to do it. But we can see this fella here now. As little hair as I have left on my arm, it's doing a grand job taking it off. So we're going to fire away and see if we can get this thing reasonably flat. So I'm taking shavings now off some of the high spots, but I found a bit of a problem. Um, it's grand when you're going parallel to the drain. When you switch into the end sections here, you're going to cross the grain. So, so I think I'm going to have to come back when it's all done with a smaller plane and just do the end parts or maybe sand the whole thing down when I'm done. But for now, I'm just going to spend a few minutes taking big, chunky, lovely shavings. So I'm fairly happy now with how flat either side is. We still have a good, thick, strong board that will serve as our lid. The next thing I need to do is joint the edges flat here. So I'm going to chuck this fella here in my vise. And then we're just going to use the same number seven to just run up along the edge and get this nice and flat. Now you can see there now I'm breaking off the end grain here and normally I'd come at it the other way to stop that from happening. But the lid is actually too wide so we're going to be cutting these off at the end anyway so I'm not too bothered. So I'm not too sure yet how I'm going to cut these parts here. An idea I had was just to chuck them in the vise here real quick. They're actually standing on the floor right now. And now I have a wooden plane down here, if I can get at it. There we go. Now, last time I checked, it was taking a fairly deep cut. So I reckon I could just use that to bring it down to the level I want it to. It'll probably cut fairly quick as well. I can always grab a hammer. Now this is a bit oversized here, but move the iron in a bit further. And there, we're taking a big fat shaving. But it'd save us the trouble of vicing it up and then cutting a straight line. Whereas when we can just take 
some monstrosities of shavings real quick. We'll have it done in no time at all. So I'm pretty happy now with the whole lid. What I'm going to do is empty out the whole toolbox and plane the edge around here so that I know it is truly flat. And this will take me a while. Wait till you see how much tools is in this box. I'll give you a quick rundown here now. There will be a full tour when the box is done about all the different tools, but here's a good chunk of the saws we have in it, all serving slightly different functions. A load of socket chisels here. Um, another smoothing plane, that's number three. A rebate plane and a, shoulder, a little shoulder plane and a block plane. A few incy wincy little planes here. And then we have like a small pin hammer, a ruler, a marking gauge. And that's just in the top section. In the drawers then we have all sorts of delights. The coolest one being this is Stanley, Stanley number 50 we have in here. Now that's a plane that'll do the work of a large section of molding planes. But I'll touch on all of these tools later down the line once I have the full box tour up for now. I just need to take everything out so that I can work on this. This thing weighs a ton even with nothing in it. So with that full of all the tools, I'll probably need a second person to help me move it in and out of the car. I'm not sure if it'll even fit in the car. I'm contemplating building a trailer or buying a trailer um, and then getting a hitch for the car. That way I'll be able to have a whole like mobile workshop to bring up and down the country. Do you know what I mean? I'll have a tent, a pole lay, the sawhorse, a workbench, and this tool chest, and that's what I'll be able to set up at all the markets and the fairs. It was great last year being able to go to all of them, but one of the biggest problems I had uh, was when it rained. I was kind of fairly, there wasn't a whole lot I could do. Uh, so if I have a tent over me, I'll be able to work in any sort of rain. And it'll also be a more impressive workshop instead of just having a few sawhorses and a few vices and whatever set up at the side of the streets. It's a nice old, um, what you call it, a compass plane here. I really like this tool. I restored it not so long ago. So here it is now, all empty. Um, there's still a bit of work I need to do on the back here. I'm going to bring a smoothing plane to all this. But for now, I just need to lift it down onto the floor. And there we go. Jeez, I can just about manage her on my own when there's absolutely nothing inside of us. Whew. I'll probably need big forged handles on either side and maybe even two handles. This is going to be a two-man job to move around. For pine, it's heavy old stuff. Now I need to find out what's the best way to actually plane this. I probably don't need to clamp it onto anything because it's so heavy. If I just grab a plane, I'll probably be able to just use my legs or something to kind of hold against it. Basically, this belly here is flat and I need to plane him down so he's also at 30 degrees. So that's today's plan. We're also going to try flatten this part here. There's a load of nails, so I reckon I'm going to be cursing a few times when I run my lovely sharp plane blade over a nail, but we'll see how we get on. You know, the Japanese plane I got recently enough would probably be good for this job. This is a plane that's designed to be pulled. So instead of pushing into something that's not fastened to anything, it's probably a bit easier to pull it. So I think that's what I'm actually going to do here. I'm going to grab a hammer, make sure this is taking a bit of a deeper cut and just kind of, yeah, that's what we'll give a try. I'm telling you lads, this Japanese steel is unbelievable. It holds its edge so well. I actually didn't even sharpen this fella before I used it this time and it's cutting end grain without any tear out or anything. Absolutely phenomenal, these things. The first thing I did was turn it over so that the front was facing the floor and the back here was very rough. So I have a horned smoothing plane here that was actually gifted to me by viewers from Germany. So I'm using that fella there now. I'm sat on a stool and I'm pulling it towards me just to plane that surface relatively smooth. I'll probably go over it later with sanding paper or whatever, but I'd just taken a scrub plane to that uh, a few weeks ago, so it needed to be smoothed down, and that's what we're doing here. So I can be seen here with a hand crank drill, just making some pilot holes so that we can later on screw in those hinges nice and easy. Then we can come along with a brace and bit here and drill in those screws. Before anyone comments asking why I didn't just use a cordless power drill, I'm trying to build this box entirely only using hand tools and then I'm going to use the hand tools I used to make the box and put them inside it. So I just want to do everything with a knot but elbow grease at the minute so that's why you won't see any power tools in this video. So later on I screwed the hinges onto the actual lid itself and then it was time to start work on the actual pieces that would hold the tools in place. So I started with the saw handles. And all I had to do there was mark out the shape of the place where you insert your hand in the saw handle. So I'm drawing it on to cut off a of pine here, marking it out with a pencil. Once we get all marked out, I can come along with my coping saw 
and just cut out the shape like that. Now I hope you guys weren't looking for actual footage of me using the coping saw because I decided that I'd point the camera in the entire wrong direction so instead you get to hear me use the coping saw while watching my hips wiggle. I did however get some nice footage of me cutting the pieces of leather that I also used to hold the tools in place. This was probably the most satisfying part of the whole job, just placing a bit of leather there and a piece of wood and then bringing a nice sharp chisel up to it and just driving it right down through the leather. So once I had all the little pieces ready to go, I actually had to go about attaching them to the lid. So I have a piece of pine here left over that I'm just going to bore a quick hole down through. And we can attach that piece on top of the cutout we made that will fit inside the saw handle. And once we have it all ready to go, we can drive a copper nail down between the two of them. And then we can go about tediously trying to glue that into place. So we can see there now we have the rip cut saw being held up by a leather strip at the end of the blade. So that's what we're putting in here on the second for the rip cut saw. And you can see there now our awkward amping jig. Uh, so we're going to have to do the same for the rip cut saw. And I kind of left this overnight so we came back the next morning and they were as tight as could be. So it's time for the moment of truth. Will the saw stay in place when we actually close the lid? So we can see there now they shut grand. When you pull it back open the saws are just where we left them. The next tool I wanted to add was a draw knife here and for this I just got some uh, brass hooks and I bent them so the draw knife actually isn't held in place incredibly strong it's actually pretty loose you'll see later when I move up and down the lid uh, the draw knife is just being wobbled around the place but it hasn't fallen out so I think it's good. You can see now we've also added a marking knife below the draw knife and the last thing that I wanted to add below the draw knife was this uh, bevel gauge here so we just use strips of leather with copper nails once more to hold them in place. I thought I might need two for the bevel gauge, but one seemed to do the trick. So we can be seen here using our hand crank drill one last time to insert the last four tools onto the lid. So I'm actually going to be holding three tools under this one long strip of leather. The vernier calipers will kind of have its own section, but the wooden rule and the 12 inch square are both under the one loop. And we also have a smaller 6 inch square and that has its own little hook right here below the rip cut saw. Well lads, here we are now. So as you can see, every tool I want to have on the lid of the box is now stuck in place. So when we fold up the lid every time we want to go grab our tools, we have a rip cut saw, a cross cut saw, a little draw knife here, a bevel gauge, a marking knife, vernier calipers, a wooden rule, uh, and then two squares here. So they'll all be very easy to grab. Now right down here in front of me, I have all the planes, or the majority of the planes I'll need, and then everything else that I won't be using as often will be stored down here. Good Lord. This reminds me that later on today, I need to go down to the hardware store and buy a metal chain uh, that'll run from here up until here. And what that'll do is it'll stop it from falling back and breaking. Uh, so yeah, we're one step closer. I think um, what I need to do now is just glue everything into place here. I have everything where I know it's going to go. I have a saw rack here. Um, I just need to glue down the partitions and stuff like that. And then maybe down here, I'm going to put some spoke shaves inside the doors and stuff. Uh, but until next time, thank you guys once again for watching. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Good luck.